Greetings and welcome to our online liturgy here at Mosaic. My name is Joseph and it is a true blessing to welcome you into this virtual and still sacred space. If you're joining us live at 10 a.m., um, go ahead and say hello to us uh, uh, in the chat box, hello to one another. Um, also, in the online platform, if you're joining us on the online.church platform, um, there's many ways for you to connect with us. There's a connect uh, registration card, up, a digital registration card that says connect, um, and then there's a link to our giving page. Um, also, there's a note box, and in that note box is information on how to connect with us and other pertinent things that might be worth sharing in that note box. So go ahead and check those things out. Um, here at Mosaic, one of the things that I wanted to do, one of the things that we want to do is to provide a place for people to just be, uh, whether it's be with one another, to be in community, or to be and reflect, or just to be here and, and be loved, and so that they can go forth and be loved. And we had the opportunity this past week when we allowed a group of people to come and just, um, just be. We provided the space for them to come and, and digest and process this intense, intense uh, election season. And um, they did a lot of processing uh, their feelings and, and the tension within them by painting. And throughout our space today, um, there's a lot of paintings like this. Um, and this one is done by Alice. And um, it's a beautiful painting. It's a beautiful drawing. And that's one of the things that we want to continue to do is to provide space for people in our community to be, uh, to, whether it's to be searching, to be exploring, whether it's to come here to doubt or to heal or to hurt or to grieve or to mourn. Uh, we continue to want to provide a place for people to come and experience life, experience love, experience God, experience that Jesus Christ who loves us deeply. And um, I am grateful for any opportunity uh, for that to take place. Uh, so this space is always open. If you want to come and, and just sit and, and reflect and, and pray, or just sit and, and meditate, um, just let me know. And we have ways to let you in without me coming here and, and whatnot. So there's always ways for you to come and, and be in this space. Uh, so let me know that. And again, if you go to the note box, you'll find a way to be in contact with us. Now let's prepare our hearts to offer our worship to God. Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the works thy hand has made, I see the stars, I hear the roaring thunder, thy power throughout the universe display. Then sings my soul, my Savior. How great Thou art, how great Thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God to Thee, how great Thou art, how great Thou art, then through the woods and forest glades I Sing sweetly in the trees When I look down From lofty mountain grandeur And see the brook And feel the gentle breeze Then sings my soul, my Savior Savior God 
to thee How great thou art How great thou art Then sings my soul My Savior God to thee How great thou art How great thou art The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son came into the world, that he might destroy the works of the devil and make us children of God and heirs of eternal life, grant that, having this hope, we may purify ourselves as he is pure, that when he comes again with power and great glory, we may be made like him in his eternal and glorious kingdom, where he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. I hate all your show and pretense The hypocrisy of your praise The hypocrisy of your festivals I hate all your show Away with your noisy Away with your noisy hymns I stop up my ears when you're singing I hate all your show Instead let there be a flood of justice An endless procession of righteous living You sing right along with the band You shine your shoes for services But there's blood on your hands You turned your back on the homeless And the ones who don't fit in your plan Quit playing religion games blood on your hands and said let there be a flood of justice and then this procession of righteous living living and said let there be a flood of justice instead of a show Now a reading from Matthew. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten young bridesmaids who took their lamps and went out to meet the groom. Now five of them were wise, and the other five were foolish. The foolish ones took their lamps but didn't bring oil for them. But the wise ones took their lamps and also brought containers of oil. 
When the groom was late in coming, they all became drowsy and went to sleep. But at midnight there was a cry, Look, the groom, come out to meet him. Then all the bridesmaids got up and prepared their lamps. But the foolish bridesmaids said to the wise ones, Give us some of your oil, because our lamps have gone out. But the wise bridesmaids replied, No, because if we share with you, there won't be enough for our lamps and yours. We have a better idea. You go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were gone to buy oil, the groom came. Those who were ready went with him into the wedding. Then the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came and said, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he replied, I tell you the truth, I don't know you. Therefore, keep alert, because you don't know the day or the hour. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. This parable is, is a funky one. A lot of parables in Matthew are hard. But, but the idea that these uh, bridesmaids waited and waited and waited and waited until the groom showed up is so relatable today. Because as I am recording this, we are still waiting and have been waiting and will probably continue to wait for the election to be officially over. But back to the parable. The thing about this parable is that no one, nobody in this parable, the characters, none of them are, sh are shown in a positive light. The groom is, is so late. And on top of that, the groom seems a bit callous not letting in the women who went to get more oil. And then you have all 10 bridesmaids who fell asleep. And what probably is one of the most important days of their lives, they, they just couldn't hold out and, and they fell asleep. And then you have the five wise uh, bridesmaids who had oil, but refused to share the oil with, with those who had not. And basically said, hey, you know what would be a good idea? Is for you to get up and go and find someone at midnight, who would sell you oil for your lamp? Nobody comes out looking like a saint. And while we can focus on a common translation, uh, a trans, uh, uh, interpretation of this, of this parable, which is about being prepared and being ready, I kind of want to focus on the five foolish bridesmaids. Because I feel, I believe that their mistake wasn't that they didn't have oil, I think their mistake was that they didn't quite know Jesus. I think their mistake was they didn't quite know or trust the generosity and love of Jesus. If you read the four Gospels, you will see that Jesus loves himself some weddings and Jesus loves himself some parties. And at the end of each wedding story and at the end of each party story, it ends with some sort of act of generosity by God through Jesus Christ. We have the wedding at Cana where, where wine went, runs out and, and, and Mary says to Jesus, there's no more wine. And, and Jesus takes the water and turns it into wine. And there's plenty of wine to go around for everyone. A couple of weeks ago, we read about the wedding banquet where the Jesus figure invites, the, uh, invites people and, and is rejected. So then he goes out and he invites anyone and everyone to come to this party and to have a blast and to enjoy the wedding and the feast. See, I believe that if these women, these five foolish bridesmaids had stayed, fighting through the insecurity of, of not having enough, fighting through the insecurity that they might not be enough, fighting through the uncomfortableness and insecurity of not being prepared, I think they would have been still welcomed into the room, into the party, and, and then witnessed and experienced the generosity of Jesus. And, and to see that there was enough oil and enough of everything for everyone who were present at the party. Their biggest mistake, again, isn't that they forgot oil. Their biggest mistake was they lacked faith, and instead of holding on, they tried to take things into their own hands. They tried to take matters into their own hands. Now remember, the context of this parable is that the disciples asked Jesus uh, uh, to give them signs about when the end of times will be. 
And Jesus basically told them this parable and, say, and said, just hold on and wait and have faith. Jesus is saying, wait, just wait through this pandemic. Wait through this, this uh, election season. Wait through whatever tumultuous season that you are experiencing in your very own lives, knowing that there is hope, knowing that the worst thing that happens to us will never be the last thing. Just wait. Oh, but the English language is so limited. Because when we think about waiting, there's a passiveness that is implied. Like, when we're waiting for Jesus, it often implies that we just sit around twiddling our thumb and just wait for the, uh, just watch the world pass us by so that we don't get into any trouble and we just wait until Jesus comes and takes us home. But that's not the type of waiting that Jesus is talking about. It's, it's more like, uh, think of it like waiting for your graduation as a freshman in high school or a freshman in college. In order to graduate, you have to put in the work. You have to be diligent. You have to take the right classes. You have to make sure you have the right electives. You have to make sure that you, you go to school because, so that you don't have too many absences. Rarely, rarely does one graduate while waiting and doing absolutely nothing. Simply, while we wait, there is work that we need to do. So we continue to push through, compelled by love. We live in a broken world where love can actually truly make a difference. In fact, we are called to make a difference in this world. And, and our reading from Amos makes it absolutely clear. Basically, God is saying, unless you practice justice on behalf of the less fortunate our worship is empty. Our worship is, is a waste of time. God is saying that God will not tolerate comfortable worship that takes place isolated from the community, isolated from the vulnerable. If we don't care about the less fortunate, God doesn't want our praises. God doesn't want our prayers. So while we are waiting for the party to start, we make sure that we get the place ready and we go out in the name of love inviting anyone and everyone to come and, and get ready for this great party. One more thing about this parable. The beauty about this parable for me is that I've been the foolish one who's, who, who, whose lamp has run out. I've been the wise one who was afraid of sharing and losing what I have. And I've been the groom who's, uh, who refused to let people in. And I guess that's a good characteristic of a story where we can see ourselves in the characters, all our flaws and everything else. So if you find yourself being the foolish bridesmaid, hold on and wait even in the darkness. It is a holy place and God will meet you there. And if you find yourself feeling like a wise bridesmaid, remember that we are blessed to be a blessing. Be generous with what you have, even, even if it scares you. And don't trade temporary comfort for lasting and beloved community. The, the chance to give of yourself is a holy place, and God will meet you there. And if you find yourself feeling like the, uh, bro, uh, the groom, remember to open wide the door for your party. Don't let hurt feelings and fear insulate you from others. Welcoming those who have made mistakes and who walk, who walk in darkness is a holy place, and God will meet you there. And now let us recite the Nicene Creed together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. 
By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us confess our sins. Merciful God, we have sinned in what we have thought and said, in the wrong we have done, and in the good we have not done. We have sinned in ignorance, we have sinned in weakness, we have sinned through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry, we repent and turn to you. Forgive us for our Savior Christ's sake and renew our lives to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. All is not lost, is not lost. Mm. All is not lost, is not lost.
the road to peace I know is hell I know it well Is not lost, is not lost. Mm. Oh, is not lost, is not lost. Mm. May the seeds of peace. Be scattered, birth in trees whose shade gives us rest, and may the seeds of peace be scattered, birth in trees whose shade gives us rest. And may the seeds of peace be scattered, birth in trees whose shade gives us rest. May the seeds of peace be scattered, birth in trees whose shade gives us rest. chapter 50. Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and make good your vows to the Most High. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. How's it going, everyone? My name is Andrew Kim and I'm actually from Hawaii, but I live in California. And today I'm actually at Salvation Mountain, um, pretty close to Joshua Tree in California. Highly recommend coming here, it's pretty surreal. Um, let's go ahead and start with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day of our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses and forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. My dear friends, let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.